So we're going to use Kali for this demonstration, and we're going to need another system. So here I have a Wasp Broken Web Applications VM, which is one of my VMs. And it has a web application, and the web server is running by default. So first, I want to sniff the entire traffic passing through the ETH0 interface, right? TCP dump is embedded into Kali, so we're ready to use it. If you type TCP dump and then hit enter, it starts to listen to the traffic. And by default, it listens to the interface of the E0, and that's exactly what we want right here. So, right, there's no traffic at the moment. So, let's make some noise. I'll go to the OWASP BWA and ping Kali. Now, turn back to Kali, and yes, here we have the packets caused by the ping command. ICMP echo requests and replies. And there are some other packets, too. And, of course, our requests and the responses before them. So we can limit the number of received packets using the C parameter. The command stops when it receives specified number of packets. And here it stops after the fifth packet. And having a look at the results, we see the domain names of the source and the destination systems. Is especially good for remote systems outside the network, but we may want to see the IP addresses of the systems instead of the domain name. So to do this, we can use the N parameter. And now the computers are listed with their IP addresses. Okay, so let's turn back to the first example. We were listening to the ETH0 interface. And like I said before, it listens to this interface if the interface is not specified. And we can specify the interface we want to listen to by using the I parameter. Use I with the name of the specified interface, ETH0 in this example, and hit enter. Now the second example, let's sniff only the TCP traffic between us and a target host. DCP dump is the command itself. Host parameters specify that the target host and TCP is a protocol we want to listen. So it started to listen to the TCP packets between Kali and OWASP BWA. We have no TCP traffic at the moment, so let's create some. So I'll open a browser window and visit the web page hosted on OWASP BWA. Now turn back to the terminal screen, and whoa, we have a lot of TCP packets caused by HTTP requests and responses. Now we didn't use the end parameter, so we see the domain names and the service types, such as HTTP, instead of the port numbers. Now let's run the same command once again, but with the end parameter. So I'll go to the application and just click an arbitrary link to create some traffic. Now back to the terminal. See, look, the traffic with IP addresses and their port numbers. So in the third example, let's have a look only at the IP traffic received from the target host. And right, if we don't enter any parameter, we will see the IP packets received from the target host. However, we see a lot of different packets here as well. Mm. So now I'll show you how to filter the received packets. So to see only the received packets from the target host, we use SRC. So it's basically a keyword SRC before the host parameter. Now the host IP and the IP keyword to filter the IP packets. And look at that, as soon as we hit enter, we start to receive some packets because the ping command in the OWASP BWA is still running. We see the ICMP echo requests, but we don't see the ICMP responses because we used the SRC keyword before the host and we wanted to see only the received packets from the target host. So that's as it should be.
Now let's go to the web app and click any link to create some HTTP traffic. And here are the IP packets of the HTTP requests. Now you can press Control and C key to stop the command. So in this next example, let's filter the TCP traffic of the entire network generated by HTTP requests and responses. So the net parameter to define the network, specify the network, and here it's 172.16.99.0 slash 24. And to filter the HTTP traffic, we can specify port 80. So here we assume that the applications are using the default port, which is 80. Okay, so we'll start to listen. Now I'll go to the web browser and click any link to create the HTTP requests. And here is all the TCP traffic sent to or received from the default port 80. So what would happen if we didn't use the port parameter? Well, as you can see here, we would see the ICMP echo requests and replies as well because the ping command is still running in the LWASP BWA system. So lastly, let's see the SSH traffic from a specified host to another one. First, I'll go back to a WASP BWA and check if the SSH service is running. Use service SSH status to check it. Yep, SSH service is running on a WASP BWA. So to see the port that SSH listens to, you can use the netstat TNLP command. And as you see here at the top of the screen, SSH listens to the port 22, the default port for SSH. So in Kali, I'll open another terminal screen and create an SSH connection between Kali and OWASP BWA. Type SSH root at the IP address of OWASP BWA and hit enter. Enter the password of the root user of OWASP BWA, which is, remember, OWASP BWA, uh, as long as you haven't changed it. And here we have an SSH connection. So I'll go to the other terminal screen to create the TCP dump command. SRC host to specify the source host. And DST host to specify the destination host and port. So now go to the SSH connection and send something to the OWASP BWA. Hey, look at that. See, so we capture the packets in every keystroke. The packets are from Kali to the port 22 of OWASP BWA. And I'm sure you saw it like I did because we wanted to see the traffic only if the source host is Kali and the destination host is OWASP BWA. We don't see the SSH packets received from OWASP BWA. To see both sent and received packets, we can change the command to something like this. TCP dump host 172.16.99.139 and port 22. Now we'll see the received packets as well as the sent packets.